is too much immigration to a country is that a is that a problem and i, I asked that because it seems like something that only mm. A few years ago, racists spoke about, or, or people people assumed to be mm. racist, and now seems to be becoming a more mainstream discussion. Well, I, I think that in terms of the immigration debate, because I, I often talk about I often talk about ethnic minority success, and then people say, "Oh, but do, do you not think that immigration is a problem?" I think you find that many established ethnic minority families think that the current rates of immigration are a problem. Yeah. Uh, if, well, especially if, no, I, I definitely know in like some Jewish, I don't want to have, throw them under the bus, <laughs> but you know the grandparents and stuff. It's like you come mm. in, you, it's a human reaction, sort of. You climb up the ladder and you pull the ladder up with you because you're scared that you know you're. Yeah, you know, but I also think it's it, it, it's. Uh, what, one could say it's also a positive sign of integration as well mm. that you, you you you've adopted such a strong British identity. Yeah. You become quite protect, protectionist <laughs> when it comes to matters of immigration, and I think that when it comes to being integrated, that includes you know being concerned over the quality of public services. Now, of course, that's not all down to immigration, but I think people are being dishonest if they don't think that the current rates of immigration won't have an impact on the quality of public services, the availability of affordable housing, but even crucially social cohesion. Now, if ethnic minority communities which are quite established originate from countries which have had great deal of social instability, severe political tensions, to the point we're talking about civil conflict, then they may well be naturally protective of social cohesion in the UK. And I think those are perfectly leg legitimate positions and it doesn't make them sellouts by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. I was hearing that's why some people crit are critical of Egypt for not taking in Palestinians mm. right now. And you've got to think like, given what Palestinians are going through, whatever side of the thing you are on with that, to then have all those people come into Egypt, like they've mm. had trauma, difficult times, poverty, come into Egypt and then still, you know, they've had parents killed by Israel. Well, they're going to mm. start firing rockets into it. Why would Egypt want to take on that responsibility? Yeah, I, I think that the, the Egyptian national interests will come into play. There is also the argument that there might be the belief within certain elements of Egyptian society that by doing that, ultimately, the Palestinians will be vacating land, which they may feel actually belongs to the Palestinians. Sure, sure. So even though they may be suffering a great deal with the ongoing conflict they think well actually they, they need to stay there because if we were to provide them with sanctuary then th they would have vacated the land which yeah. is not necessarily something that they don't want but of course there, there's certain we have to just be honest there's certain elements of Palestinian society that that have been somewhat radicalized especially mm. under the leadership of Hamas so it's natural for countries to also have concerns over that in terms of thinking about how do we integrate it large numbers of people who have gone through that trauma and may will be radicalized under terrorist organizations mm, whereas, so and then in the uk is is it important i mean i guess we need immigration mm. i've just spoken to paul morland about you know we're not mm. having enough children we're not having babies we mm. need immigration how do we decide where we get that immigration from uh, well, I, I think in terms of the argument about this, this demographic time bomb, in terms of people not having enough children, having an aging uh, population, uh, we need to look at how do we encourage British citizens who come in a, vari a variety of shapes and sizes and indeed skin colours and ethnicities, how do we make younger people feel more confident in terms of getting married and ha building a family of their own because the reality is i think that the current environment at the moment is is incredibly harsh i think that there is a lack of affording ho affordable housing available and i think that owning a home naturally makes people feel more confident in terms of building a family of their yeah. own i think the two are very closely linked uh, i think that people even have an issue in terms of maybe in recent times they feel that maybe their local area a crime has risen uh, they might look at the quality of our public transport not quite up to scratch cost of living i mean especially in parts of london the, the life is just prohibitively expensive mm -hmm. so we need to have a very serious debate about how do we create a more fr family friendly society now when you look at cost of living the reality is children they're a blessing but they're also quite expensive <laughs> as well and people will bear that in mind when thinking about building a family of their own and we also need to look at how our welfare system works but also our tax system do we promote family building do we promote do we encourage people 
in terms of having children. So we need to look at our systems mm. and see how do we actually create a more family friendly society where younger people believe that they have a genuine stake in society. Because if you don't have a stake in society, I think it's very unlikely that you want to build a family of your own without mm. that mm. stake. So I think that we need to have those questions and I'd much rather go in that kind of direction as opposed to thinking we have an aging population, British people aren't having enough children. We should try to um, bridge that gap through large scale immigration. Mm. And what about the, I suppose, the other immigration argument is the philosophical one of, you know, mm. wh why do we get to live in this really nice place? Shouldn't people be able to come over from worse places where they can't afford to live and those kinds of things? I've heard this argument before as a sort of uh, global justice argument, if you yeah. call it that. Uh, are there are many people in the world who are unfortunate. That's the trend. They, they live in very difficult contexts. And uh, I think usually I have quite a liberal view when it comes to our asylum system, for example, I think we should prioritise the world's very most persecuted people, uh, peoples and we should offer them the opportunity to start a new life uh, in the UK. But what I won't accept is supporting an immigration and asylum system which is designed to make Britain some kind of international outpost uh, in order to maximise global welfare. Because I think if that comes at the expense of social solidarity and domestic public safety, then I can't possibly support those kind of systems. Mm, it's complex, isn't it? Because neither you nor I nor Michal, uh, our, our director, would be here um, were it not for immigration. No, but I, I think that ultimately <laughs> when it comes to being well integrated and having a strong British identity, I don't think that because we are of migrant stock that we're automatically obliged to support open borders. Mm. I don't think I don't think that's correct. I know some people uh, look to develop that narrative and they peddle that narrative. But I think when it comes to being British, I think that the key thing you really have to think about is the overall well-being of wider British society. And that, I think in my view, that includes having, in, in my opinion, quite conservative positions on immigration and asylum. Are there ways to make sure that if we have immigration and people come over, that they are the people who are most likely to assimilate? I think there's a strong argument for that. I think that if you were to s develop an immigration system which prioritises those who may originate from countries with high rates of English language literacy, I think that, I think that, that I think that would be a real positive from an integration perspective. Uh, if they have legal and political systems which are similar to our own, so the the prevailing legal and political norms in their country of origin if they're compatible with ours i think that would naturally mm. benefits us uh, from an integration perspective uh, and and crucially if much of this uh, migration was to come from places which are similarly developed um, in terms of their economy uh, then i think that that would also be a benefit for the immigration system What's your biggest concern with immigration? I think you were talking about resources and things. Mm. What's going to happen to resources that wouldn't just happen if we had more kids? I, I think with f f when it comes to the argument, uh, in terms of why people say, oh, Rakib, you're a migrant stock. Why are you so opposed to immigration? I'm not opposed to immigration. Why is it I believe in controlled immigration? I think it needs to be well managed. Uh, if you look at the Leicester disorders, which took place in August, September 2022, uh, there were mo migrant communities there which are quite well established, saying that actually it's, it's new and emerging communities here, which contributed a great deal towards those disorders. So I think a very strong argument is social cohesion. I think that if you want to cultivate and maintain a high level of social solidarity, I think that you need to have a fairly restrictive immigration system and you need to also have an asylum system which has integration at the heart of it. Man, it's so complicated, isn't it? And because also a lot of the flavors of life mm. have come from immigration. Think of America, think of here. What would we have if, you know, if we didn't have that? That was some of the mm. beautiful things that different, um, different groups of people have brought. But I, but I also respect what you're mm. saying that there's a lot, there are a lot of issues. One thing I've heard you talking about as well, which is always overlooked, is being able to talk about racism mm. without necessarily speaking about white people. It's quite a white centric thing mm. to do, isn't it? There are actually a lot of conflicts going on in the US and the UK. That are, that are nothing to do with white people. 
Oh, no, no, absolutely. I, I, I often make the point that the sharpest social and political tensions in the UK don't involve the largely secular white British mainstream. I think the Leicester disorders were a fine example of that. Mm -hmm. We saw the recent inflammation of um, racial tensions in Peckham, mm. South East London. Who are these all between? Because so, I know a lot of non you non Yeah, so, so Peckham, so, so, <laughs> this was essentially on the back of a physical altercation between an Asian origin male shopkeeper and, uh, and a black female customer who was accused of stealing mm -hmm. essentially uh, taking goods which she, she didn't have a right to that was the accusation and then th this caused a great deal of tension in the local area and th this establishment uh, th th there were messages placed on the front of this establishment such as go to hell Patel yeah. and um, uh, parasitic merchants um, need to be rooted out of the local community sort of echoing the sort of um, idiomine rhetoric yeah. uh, when it yeah. when he expelled um uh ugandan asians on 90 days notice so uh, and and then more recently there was a flare-up in camberwell um in south london where these tensions are supposedly within the eritrean community uh, between those who are quite supportive of the current eritrean government and those who believe that the current president of eritrea yeah. needs to be removed so i think what i think the issue here is when you have very high levels of immigration you are running the risk of importing very serious um geopolitical tensions and political conflicts from other parts of the world, and that is a real concern.